Hey everyone, welcome back to another Beast of the Mesozoic Ceratopsian series review. Today we're taking a look at the Subadult Triceratops. It's about time I got around to reviewing this figure. This is the last one I needed to do from Wave 1 to complete my reviews. And about a month from now, Wave 2 will be shipping, so we have that to look forward to in April. This beautiful looking Triceratops retails for $65, and I'll leave a link to Creative Beast Studios in the description if you want to pick this figure up for yourself. So before we take a closer look at this figure, let's just go over the packaging really quick. You've got some beautiful artwork on the sleeve of the Triceratops. The Beast of the Mesozoic logo is done in a metallic red color. And then turn the box over to the side, you get a nice silhouette of the Triceratops with the Beast of the Mesozoic logo. And on the back of the box, you have some artwork of the Triceratops, the same artwork that's on the front sleeve with some information. And you also get a collector card with the same information on the back of that card. And if you remove the sleeve, you have a check checklist for all the Wave 1 figures. I got everything from Wave 1 except for the Protoceratops. For me personally, I much rather have the 118 scale that's supposed to be coming out when Wave 3 ships. So enough about the packaging. Let's take a closer look at this beautiful looking trike. So let's start with a nice 360 degree view of the Subadult Triceratops. Just like all the figures in this series, it's extremely well done. The sculpting and detail are fantastic and the paintwork is really well done. I just love the contrasting colors on this figure, it just really makes it pop. The color scheme is based off the lace monitor, more specifically the bell phase lace monitor. The main body is black and yellow and you have these light blue highlights along the back and hips that add a nice contrast to it. It really makes this figure pop and I love the off-white coloration along the face. It just really contrasts really well with the black. It gives it that war paint look. It's like something Collecte would do but much better done and plus the added articulation. You can get these figures in some pretty dynamic poses and like I've been saying on every one of these figures I've been reviewing they're just a ton of fun to mess around with. Let's just do a couple quick measurements. This figure is 10 and a half inches long from the tip of the beak to the tip of that short tail and just about four and a half inches tall to the top of the frill. Triceratops in real life was 26 to 30 feet long. It was one of the largest ceratopsians. So with those measurements, I'll put this figure somewhere in the 130 to the 135 scale range. So if you collect within that scale range, this figure will fit beautifully in your collection. But since this is a sub-adult Triceratops, it does scale really well with the rest of the Beast of the Mesozoic figures. And we are actually getting an adult 118 scale Triceratops in wave three, and that thing's gonna be an absolute monster. So let's zoom in and take a look at some of the finer details on this figure starting with this beautiful head sculpt. Now there are two valid species of Triceratops, Triceratops horridus and Triceratops prorsus. This figure and the adult that's coming out in wave three are sculpted after Triceratops horridus. It would be nice in the near future if David decided to you know, re-release these Triceratops with different head sculpts. If he redid the head into Triceratops process, it would be really cool to display both species on the shelf. The head sculpt on this figure is really well done. The eye is done in a blood red color with a yellow iris and a black pupil. It kind of gives it that demon look. It's very reminiscent of the old PNSO Triceratops in Wilson T-Rex with the way the eye looks. The horns are very sharp looking. You get some nice scale detail around the nasal area. You can see the nostril sculpted in right here. Now, if you look at the frill, there's very little detail on here. That's because this frill was sculpted to have that keratin sheet look. There was always a debate among paleontologists that Triceratops have scales on his frill or was it covered in this horny-like material? Well, right after this figure was sculpted, at the very end of 2018, a Triceratops specimen was discovered with scale impressions along the frill. So now we do know that Triceratops actually did have scales on the frill. So like I said, this figure was sculpted before that discovery was made. And you do have a little bit of scale detail at the edge of the frill right here. Some nice details around the eye socket. And then going down to the beak, the beak is beautifully sculpted, has a nice sharp feel to it. And then opening the mouth, let me just turn it to the side, you can see a tongue in there. Now on the Styracosaurus, the tongue is articulated. I've tried messing around with this tongue with the end of a pen and I can't really get it to move around. I don't want to force it too much. I don't want to break it if it's not meant to be articulated. But you can see the tongue is sculpted in there and you can see some molars sculpted on the bottom jaw and the upper jaw. You're just going to kind of squint to see them. One of the very minor critiques I have about this figure, it's the way the horns are. So since David went with like that character sheath look, the horns just like gradually grow out of the skull right here. And because the horns are a separate piece, you get this seam line right here that breaks up that beautiful paintwork. It's kind of distracting, you know, all the horns on all the figures 
in this series are a separate piece, but because most of those sculpted with scales, the horns look natural coming out of the skull. And just for some reason, this Triceratops, just because the way it's sculpted, you know, the horns aren't super, super flush. You do get that little bit of a seam line, which I do find distracting. And going down to the neck, you can see some beautiful scale detail here. The neck is mostly black with just that little bit of light blue highlight. I love the light blue on this figure. This really, really makes it pop. You get some large, you know, hexagonal scales with that little dimple coming out, which is known from Triceratops skin impressions. Love the bright yellow coloration along the side right here. Just the way that contrasts with the black really makes it pop. And then turn the figure over, you got a nice... Dry brushing of white for the belly, some nice fine belly scales that gradually go into larger scales. And even the bottoms of the feet of these figures have beautiful scale detail on them. Then going down to the hands, you can see the hands have the correct number of digits. They are decked out in a glossy black paint. Same thing for the hind feet. Those are also decked out in some glossy black paint. The scale details along the legs is really nice. You have some nice large scales sculpted in there. And then going down to the very, very short tail, you get some more of those large hexagonal scales sculpted in right at the base so all in all just really really well done i do like i can't stop talking about the paint scheme on this figure i think it's probably my favorite paint scheme of the wave one figures so let's move on to articulation i already showed off that the mouth can open it can open that wide and close about that far now this is another small critique i've had about these figures i wish the jaws can close flush it just always looks like your figures display with their mouths half open and you get a joint right here at the neck that allows it's very tight on mine that allows the head to look up about that far and you can get it to look down pretty well to make it look like your triceratops is eaten or taking a drink and you do get some nice side to side movement with that joint now just be careful like you know when you push the neck joint in as far as it can go you will get a little bit of paint rub Going down to the front legs, they can move forwards, they can move backwards, they actually can go 360 degrees. You have a nice joint at the elbow right here, you get some nice bend on that. And then at the wrist, get a little bit of down movement, you get 360 degrees bend, and it can move forward a little bit. Then you have some articulation for the mid part of the body by just twisting it. You can twist the hip region from side to side, and you can get a little bit of side to side movement it's very very tight and then going down to the hind legs it can move back that far forwards that far before that thigh crashes into the stomach of the animal then you have a little bit of bend at the knee another critique i have just wishes a little bit of a cut right here to allow you to get a little bit more bend at that knee region and going down to the ankle you get some nice forwards and backwards movement and the feet can rotate 360 degrees and they do have a little bit of a pivot in there and then going down to the tail tail can swing side to side and move up and down so you know with a little bit of imagination and creativity you can get these figures in some pretty cool looking poses so let's move on with some comparisons first up here it is with some of its wave mates here it is with the juvenile centrosaurus and here it is with the, the pseudoceratops and the Zuni Ceratops. So you have a nice sense of scale of the three body types available in Wave 1 and once Wave 2 and 3 hit, these figures get a lot bigger. And next up here it is with the old Rosaurus Triceratops. These Rosaurus figures are, were like a precursor to what David is doing with the Beast of the Mesozoic line. You know, these figures were great when they came up, but man, are they fragile. I'm surprised none of mine have broke over the years. The pins on the joints of these figures are really, really prone to snapping. And next up for Triceratops figures, here it is with the Papo Triceratops that's based off the Jurassic Park trike. And next up, here it is with the awesome... 2017 safari limited triceratops and what else do i have for triceratops here it is with the pnso you know large hollow vinyl triceratops and this will give you an idea of probably how big the adult triceratops that's coming out in wave three so yeah it's going to be a big boy and we can't do triceratops comparisons without at least comparing it to its arch rival tyrannosaurus rex here it is with the new pnso Wilson T-Rex, and lastly, for comparisons, here it is with the Rebor Killer Queen T-Rex, which is based off Rexy from Jurassic Park. I have to say, 
these two figures scale really, really well with each other. You know, I feel like in Paleo Art and in some toy lines, the Mattel Jurassic World line being notorious, that Triceratops is depicted being too small. I guess it just gives the impression that T-Rex is, you know, a very large and intimidating animal, but Triceratops itself is a very, very large animal, and I think these two figures look really, really nice next to each other. So final thoughts on this figure, just like I've been saying every single time I review one of these Beasts of the Mesozoic Ceratopsian, it's fantastic. I love articulated dinosaur figures. So yeah, I do highly recommend this figure. Uh, I could not possibly choose my favorite from this series. I think they're all great, but I will say the paint scheme on this Triceratops is definitely among my favorite. I just love the blue, black, and yellow, just the way it all contrasts together. It's really appealing to my eye. You know, my biggest gripe about this figure is just that seam line right here where the horn comes out of the skull. Just find a little bit distraction, takes away from that beautiful paintwork. But other than that, it's a great figure in a fantastic series of figures that's only going to get better when each wave releases. And especially when that Tyrannosaur series drops, man, I'm going to go broke on that. My wife is going to kill me. And like I said at the beginning of the review, link to Created Beast Studios is in the description if you want to pick up any of these figures from this series. And I highly recommend you get at least one. They're just a joy to play with. So that will do it for the review. I just have one more Vitae figure to do, and I'm all caught up on my reviews. I have some new stuff coming in next week, so be on the lookout for reviews on newer figures. And as always, if you're enjoying the content on this channel, show your support by hitting that subscription button just below the video. Each subscription helps out the channel tremendously and is greatly appreciated. And I'll see you guys for the next one.